Two turntables and a microphone. Two turntables and a microphone. Okay, microphone check. Check, check, focus, and we are rolling. Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. I've covered the topic of input channel name aliasing in a previous video, but I recently replaced my Roland Studio Capture with the new Audient Evo 16 and two of their new SP8 preamps. The Evo 16 gives me 8 mic pre's, but by adding the new SP8 preamps, I now have a total of 24 ins and 24 outs, with each of the inputs utilizing Audient's Smart Gain feature. My previous Roland interface had a similar feature, they called it AutoSense, and it did essentially the same thing. I could press a button and play my drums for about 10 to 20 seconds and have my gain staging automatically set. While I did and still do love the Roland Studio Capture, its major limitation was the lack of expandability. When the Evo 16 first came out, I was excited to see another manufacturer utilizing something similar to that AutoSense feature. I was even more excited by the fact that the Evo 16 had two 8 at ins and outs, which gave me more flexibility for future expansion. At that time, I contacted Audient to see if they had any preamps in store that could also take advantage of the Smart Gain feature downstream from the primary unit, and they did not. Fast forward to today, and the SP8 can take advantage of Smart Gain, all controllable from one unit. This will not be a product review of the Evo 16. I feel like there's enough YouTubers who have already covered that. I would like to give my comparison to the Roland Studio Capture in a later video, but my primary objective of this video is to show you how to change the names of your inputs and outputs as they appear in Reaper. Let's take a look. I usually start my lesson portion of the video with the project in front of me is blah blah blah, but in this case the project really doesn't matter. So we'll get straight to the point. I'll add a new track to this project, and as I right click my record arm button to select my input, go to input mono, and as I take a look at the names that are presented by the Evo 16, I don't necessarily like them. I've got analog 1 through 8, and that's the 8 channels on the primary Evo 16. My next bank of 8 is coming from the first ADAT connected SP8, and they are named SPDIF1 ADAT1, SPDIF2 ADAT2, and then ADAT3 through 8. For the second SP8, the inputs start with SPDIF3 ADAT9, SPDIF4 ADAT10, followed by ADAT11 through 14, and finally ADAT15 and ADAT16. These names do make sense, but at the same time it would be nice to have the names adequately reflect how I see the units. Fortunately, Reaper gives us the ability to change these names. I'll go to Options, Preferences, and Audio. The lower portion of the Audio Settings dialog has Channel Naming and Mapping. My first option is Input Channel Name Aliasing and Remapping. I'll click Edit Names Map, and this brings up a listing of the inputs as presented by the Evo software. We have the hardware name on the right side, and the alias name on the left. I can double click any of the names in the alias name column to rename them. For example, my speaking mic is plugged into input 3 on the Evo 16. I can double click analog 3 and change the alias name to Lewitt Flex 441 and press OK. I'll press OK again and then toggle the check mark to enable input channel name aliasing. I'll press apply and now when I go back to my blank track, if I wanted to arm my Lewitt mic, I can right click go to Input Mono, and we can now see Lewitt Flex 441. In this long list of names, this makes it a lot easier to find things that I have hardwired to stay in a permanent connection. You can name these channels anything that you would like to suit your workflow. If at any time you'd like to temporarily turn off your aliasing, simply uncheck the Input Channel Name Aliasing option under the audio settings. I like to keep my drum set mic'd up at all times, and while I do have a template for my drum tracking, it would be nice to have the input names for my interfaces to reflect the part of the drum kit that's mic'd up. Let's go back into the Edit Names Map dialog and rename a few of these. The Audient interfaces are laid out in a fashion to where on the front of each one I have two inputs. Those inputs can be for mics or for instruments. And on the back of each unit I have six more XLR combination jacks. My kick mic is currently plugged into input 3 on the first SP8. I know that my first SP8 starts after analog 8, and given that I'd like to keep the two inputs on the front free for mic or instrument connections, I'll start with input 3, which is listed as 8 at 3. I'll double-click 8 at 3 under the alias name and change this to kick. If I'd like, I can take this a bit further and put the name of the mic that's on the kick drum, and that's an Audix D6. On input 4 for that interface, I have my hat spot mic, so I can double-click the name and rename this one as well. And that's hat with a Samson CO2 small diaphragm condenser. 
Up next on input 5 is my snare top mic. I'll double click 8 at 5 and rename this to snare audix i5. Next will be my snare bottom on input 6. I'll double click this and call this snare bottom sm57. And due to a mild bout of dyslexia, I've inadvertently placed the wrong name on one of my inputs. Let's go back to input number 11 that's currently marked as kick audix d6 and that's actually my ride spot mic. So I'll double click the entry and rename this ride Samson CO2. And now for input 15, which is actually input number 7 on the first SP8, you can see how this can get confusing really fast. This is where my kick mic actually is. So I'll double click this and name it kick audix d6. On input 8 on my first SP8, I have tom1. I'll double click and name this Tom 1, Audix D4. Now we're at input number 17. 17 and 18 are actually inputs 1 and 2 on my second SP8. And once again, I'd like to leave these free for instruments or microphone connections. So I'll start with a third connection on the second SP8, and we'll name this Tom 2, which also uses an Audix D4. Tom 3 is next, and Tom 3 uses an Audix D4 as well. Up next are my overheads. I don't have my overheads set as a stereo pair. I prefer to record them individually, and that way if by chance my measurements were wrong and I got anything off with my stereo imaging, I can adjust it in post. So first we'll have overhead hat side, and I'll just call that OH space H for hat, and that would be an Audix ADX51. I'll go ahead and copy this to make my next entry a bit easier. And then overhead ride for the second connection. I'll paste that entry and just go back and replace my H with an R. Just for the sake of clarity, I'll go ahead and spell out ride and go back and correct the previous entry to say hat. And finally, on my last two connections, I've got my room mics. Just as before, I'll double click the first entry and we'll have room hat with a golden age project FC3 large diaphragm condenser. I'll copy this entry and paste this into the next one and just replace the word hat with ride. Finally, I think I'd like to change the names of inputs 1 and 2 on each of the SP8s. So for input number 9, we'll call this SP8A-1 and SP8A-2. And we'll do the same for the second unit. So input 17 will be SP8B-1 and SP8B-2. I'm fine with leaving analog 1 through 8 for the primary unit because that makes sense. And those inputs will be flexible. I can plug up whatever I'd like whenever I'd like. One more thing that I'd like to do before closing this out completely is press the save button. This will bring up a dialog where I can create a saved copy of this channel mapping in case I ever have to wipe and reload my computer or if I move to another machine but use the same interface. So for my file name, I'll call this Evo 16 and SP8s. And finally, click OK and apply. And now when I go to Arma Track and go to Input Mono, I can see all my names as I'd like to see them. Even if you don't have an interface with as many ins and outs as this, if your driver presents your inputs with names that you just don't like, you can easily go into Reaper and rename both your inputs and your outputs to better suit your workflow. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me A Coffee. Do you have any idea how much coffee I could have bought with the money it took to buy these interfaces? Or Super Thanks links below. Visit us on Discord and engage with other Reaper users. We'll see you next time. This is not a sponsored video. I bought this with my own money. Please send coffee.